it didn't always announce that did it like in the early days of zoom i'm pretty sure it didn't and so you just kind of had to tell people now it tells them for you which is helpful All right, well, I'm gonna make a, um, a decision. I was gonna say executive decision, but it feels weird to say executive decision when I'm not the executive minister. So it's just a decision. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna begin. We have an exciting day today. So the, the thought behind today is that we can all uh, admit, or we don't even have to admit it. We all know that the pandemic has been terrible. People have lost jobs, people have got sick, some have lost lives. And it's it's been a tragedy of epic proportions, no question about it. However, there have been bright spots that have come out of the pandemic. Some of the things that I'm sure you've noticed is that we've been forced to be innovative. Um, we've always had a certain amount of innovation, the, the, you know, we're always looking for new ways to do things, but when we're, when we're actually pressed into it, we can come up with some pretty amazing things. And one of uh, the, the thoughts behind this is just to share some of those things that are going on in our region. So we have four speakers, uh, special speakers today, and we're going to let them go in alphabetical order, even though that does kind of track us from north to south. Um, and what I've asked them to share is if they would share um, maybe one thing that has come out of the pandemic that has been so good that it might just stick around after the pandemic's over. And I would invite them to share that in a second, but I'll just give Trina a chance if there's any other announcements that you want to let us know about before, just in case at the end we're kind of running close to that one hour. Um, I don't, I don't want to take away from that. So Trina, is there anything? Nope. I don't think so. Yeah, everything's pretty status quo right now. Okay. Is that the no news is good news announcement? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well then without further ado, our, our first special guest speaker comes to us from Red Deer from Sunnybrook United Church. Um, Minister there, Nancy Chagas. And so Nancy, I turn the floor over to you, the mic over to you, and we look forward to hearing about the good things that are happening at Sunnybrook. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Um, I have to admit when Stephen first asked uh, for to see if I would participate on this panel, I'm thinking, I don't know, we're, we're not doing anything too innovative. Why are you asking me? <laughs> and then realizing, you know what, we're, we're all being innovative, just as you mentioned, Stephen, uh, just to kind of get through week by week, uh, we are all having to reinvent things and uh, do things in different ways. So uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to share stories together, um, um, not thinking that what we're doing um, requires any particular attention, but just the fact that we can share stories and and um, we can all sort of uh, create our own uh, our own iteration of each of these programs according to our own circumstances. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in initially too was uh, a lot of um, a lot of programs um, and sort of the reinvention of some of these programs uh, were initiated even before I got here. And there are a lot of uh, really wonderful um, key uh, le lay leaders that have really stepped up here uh, through the pandemic. So um, I'm really appreciative of all of the leadership here at Sunnybrook. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll mention a couple things in uh, about four different areas. I'll just be really brief. And then if we have opportunity to elaborate on any of those, or if you'd like to hear anything more uh, about them, you can, you can let me know. So uh, the first area is in communication or uh, community development, then hospitality and worship and faith formation. I'll just 
um, highlight a couple of things in there that we've done a little bit differently. First of all, we we all acknowledge that communication was just so key right now uh, to try to, to keep everyone connected in different ways. And we've done that by reinventing two e-newsletters um, that uh, we worked on. One is a weekly called the Weekly Perk, and it usually it contains all of our weekly announcements. But also, um, I've used that as an opportunity to send out a, a weekly message to the whole congregation. So, sort of my version of a blog, <laughs> but it's done in any e uh, newsletter. And uh, I can you know talk about either what's coming up uh, in worship. The the Sunday coming up or things happening in the news or what's out and about in Red Deer. And it's been, people have really commented that uh, it's been a great way to uh, stay connected and to um, to learn more about what's going on at Sunnybrook when we can't always be here. Uh, the other newsletter is a seasonal newsletter. <clears throat> it's called the uh, oh, What's Brewing. And we put it out the beginning of each of the seasons of the church year and talk a little bit about um, about that season and resources available for that season and also highlight um, things that are happening in the uh, different committees in the church um, just to um, let people know that things are still going on and we're still meeting and and things are alive and happening uh, also in the uh, weekly perk. One of our uh, members, who is a, an artist and a writer, um, uh, took it upon herself to offer a weekly gift to the congregation, which is not information, it's not announcements or anything. It's just a gift, something like a image or a photograph or something to uh, to reflect on, and that's been uh, that's been very well received as well, and probably something we will continue with um, even after the pandemic. Um, I'll just talk a bit about um, our coffee Zooms, and I'm sure most people are doing coffee Zooms. We have two in the week. One is after worship. Um, for those who are uh, worshiping online, they can join right after worship into a coffee Zoom and, and uh, talk with one another. We also have a midweek one, uh, a Wednesday mornings, and uh, it's an opportunity. I usually connect with that one, and uh, sometimes uh, there's a kind of a teaser question about uh, the worship theme coming up. Um, just another opportunity to uh, to get together, and 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 it's kind of two different groups that are meeting: the Sunday morning group and the Wednesday group. So uh, another opportunity to get people together. One thing that was uh, kind of cool that happened with a, a program that used to be called Lunch and Cards uh, turned into um, Pay It Forward cards. They couldn't meet to have lunch together and, and play cards. So they, uh, they came up with this idea of sending cards uh, to certain people in the congregation and just saying, we miss you, we're thinking of you, and the car and the that message was in a, on an insert uh, in the card, and then they were to send the card off to someone else that they were thinking of and missing in the congregation as well. Just another way of connecting people. Uh, one thing I'll mention in uh, am I going on too long, Stephen? <laughs> You're good. Um, but I will mention that if, if you have questions, there'll be a time at the end after all of our panelists have shared that we can have a group discussion and questions. So hang on to those until um, we're finished with the panelists, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, one thing uh, in worship, we're, we're missing the ability to sing together. Um, and uh, the choir has not met actually since I've come. I came in January and it's been a real challenge to get to know um, everyone in the congregation, but we're doing it kind of one by one and, and in small groups. And so uh, to, to still draw in music within our worship, I'm um, uh, using the, the lyrics of the hymns as part of the liturgy. Um, but working in collaboration with our accompanists so that we still hear the music and I try to read the uh, 
uh, the lyrics, um, considering the the cadence of the uh, of the melody, and and uh, it then becomes, <clears throat> you know, we're we're hearing the familiar tunes, and we're also uh, uh, listening to the to the lyric in a different way. And a lot of people have commented that, uh, wow, they they're really thinking of those hymns in a different way altogether. So just because they're they're hearing the the lyric read instead of sung. So that's one thing we're doing that's a little bit different in worship right now. Um, <clears throat> in uh, faith formation, well, we're very fortunate to have um, an outdoor labyrinth uh, here on the property. And so we have taken advantage of that over the summer and have done some programming around our outdoor lab labyrinth. Um, also, and I'm glad to see Leela on uh, uh, on the call here, <clears throat> collaborating with uh, another United Church close by was an idea that I remember hearing from Andrea Irwin back in June when she did her presentation for the for the region and uh, really appreciated all the things that she had to offer. Um, and this was one of them is to collaborate with other congregations and. Uh, so we have two United Churches here in Red Deer and uh, been collaborating with uh, Leela and with Amy at Gates Memorial. And we're, we're trying to offer programming um, to both, uh, to uh, both um, <clears throat> and people from both congregations in a way that, uh, that helps us still continue to offer in person and online in different ways, because that, that could potentially double your workload if you're trying to uh, accomplish both of those things. But uh, by collaborating with another United Church close by as we're attempting to do, uh, although some have still been put on hold because of the circumstances right now, but uh, um, as you collaborate, we can offer online in one and in person at another and uh, people from both congregations can, uh, can participate. So I think I'll leave it at that. Give someone else a turn to talk. And <laughs> yeah, if we have questions, you can, you can ask later. <laughs> yes, that is great. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Sounds like lots of interesting things are happening at Sunnybrook right now. Uh, our next panelist is representing Basha and Pinoka United Churches and Rising Spirit, Spirit Ministry, Reverend Robin King. So I'll turn it over to Robin. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Um, yeah, so I, I noticed uh, when the uh, when I got the email about this that it, I was described as being from Bashan Pinoka. Um, and this is the thing is that uh, we are Rising Spirit is two very small communities that are working in partnership. Um, and I'm just looking at the other folks who are, who are here today, um, in Red Deer, Lethbridge, Calgary, much larger communities. And so um, a, a lot of what we've been trying to do uh, over the last year and a half is basically just simply stay connected with people because a lot of, especially in Basha, a lot of our, our, our programming, let's say, orientation is towards community uh, events, the ways in which we connect with the community, um, which has obviously been very difficult. So uh, innovative, innovative is relative, isn't it, to, to your context, what things you might consider innovative. Um, when we started uh, this partnership, Rising Spirit, um, it was innovative in a few ways, um, one of which was that we used live streaming, uh, and this is literally four years now, I guess, uh, we used live streaming between the two congregations uh, on a Sunday morning. In other words, what we, I, I would appear in person in one or the other place, there'd only be one service, but then the or the children's time and the message would be live streamed to the other congregation where there was a lay leader leading the service. So uh, in both places, uh, everything was happening in person except the learning together in the message, which was live streamed in one place. Um, and when we started doing that, you might think, oh, that gave us a two or three year heads up on what we were gonna have to do during the pandemic. Um, but we realized on the very first Sunday that what we were doing was we were simply 
live streaming what was going on in the room. And to the other congregation receiving only the learning together and the message, that was fine. But if you happen to be watching at home and you were a member of the congregation who just happened to be home, it's, uh, you were sick or an elderly person who was watching, that was fine because you knew everyone. Um, but otherwise, you might be tempted to go, good Lord, what are they doing? And so on that very first Sunday, uh, we started a conversation about the difference between what you experience in the room and what you experience by joining us online. And over the next little while, we made some fairly significant to things. And as we now go back to having people in the room, uh, we are finding ways to, uh, which, which of those things to keep and which of those things that we need to pass on in order to keep connected with the people that are in the room. And so um, that's, that's, a, that's an ongoing thing, frankly, but the, the realization that what you experience, it's like, it's like watching, if you've ever been to a talk show in person, or watched it on TV uh, is very similar kind of experience. You realize very quickly that the context being so, are so different of what you experience in real time in the room versus what you're gonna watch on screen. And uh, so th that's kind of an ongoing thing, but when we started to do that, we also that uh, we are small, uh, very small. Our resources are limited. Um, including uh, in Basha, um, for example, uh, our resources can be, tend to be very limited by our access to the internet. Um, what, what people call high speed in an urban center is um, in Basha. It's like, we, we just like, we can't, we, the TELUS, land, TELUS doesn't have fiber optic in Basha even. So we had to get a hub, a, a cell hub, and that's what we're, we're using to upload because we need that. We need that. Um, it, fortunately, Pinocchio, we had cable. And so right from the start, there were those kind of considerations. But fortunately, um, one resource that we have was uh, we happened to have an award-winning videographer who's a member of the congregation in Basha and a technical genius in Pinocchio. And so over the last year, what we've done is we've tried to we've tried to develop um, we've tried to develop a, a package or a way of explaining what we do. That is one camera, one operator, one system. Uh, we use YouTube to to live stream and Facebook Live, which are essentially free. Um, and so we've we've worked out a way um, for. Uh, congregations with limited resources, whether that is technology or personnel, to be able to uh, communicate effectively online. And uh, I, that, that had very little to do with me, okay, content, but a lot to do with uh, our guy Graham in Pinocchio and Ben in Basha and uh, their sort of creativity and vision. And uh, so our our innovation, I guess, over the last little while is how we went from uh, basically just broadcasting what was going on into a, in a room to something that truly communicates um, and allows for participation uh, as well. And, um, and that, of course, we are also taking into consideration the fact that there are very many people in Bashaw particularly, um, and elderly members of our congregation in particular, who are not online. And so we create DVDs and we have somebody visit them. And, and uh, um, every now and then we run into somebody who, and I know this is hard to believe, there are people who actually don't own DVD players either. <laughs> and so, uh, so we, create, we create a paper piece for them, but of course try also to encourage them. And uh, Graham is so awesome at this. Um, helping people with their technology at home because another learning that's not necessarily an innovation but it is a learning is it doesn't matter what you broadcast if the person receiving it has crappy equipment or doesn't know how to use it and so we've made a point of trying to connect with people um, who are kind of um, edgy with technology to make sure that um, they know what to do. And again, that's another moment where we go, uh, it's best, the best is 
for someone to just have to press a single button um, and not have to worry about, do you go here, do you go there? So we've, uh, we've made, tried to make things available as readily as we possibly can. Um, but but that's, the, uh, that's been the thing is now as we have people coming back into the church and I'm sure everybody reads these blogs all the time about how there are those who won't be coming back. And that is very true. There's actually, there's those who won't be coming back because they won't be coming back. But there's also those who won't be coming back because they'll be sticking with us online. And when we started Rising Spirit, there was meant to be a third partner. And there still is in a way, but it's kind of evolved. Um, and that was uh, we, something we called Six Ways from Sunday. And so uh, the partnership was meant to be Pinoka, Basha, and Six Ways from Sunday, which would be the only so that we were recognizing we were connecting with people who uh, aren't going to ever physically come into our building um, and again that that was a huge the first few months of learning how to deliver something that people will actually want to watch from home um, and connect with from home and not just because oh they happen to miss a Sunday in attendance but because they were actually finding it and uh, so that's, that's, it's actually been quite rewarding too. Um, and uh, even though, uh, and for, for all rural communities, they'll appreciate this, Bur um, Basha is the Bermuda Triangle of Electronics. Um, it truly is. Um, if, it's not the, if it's not the connection, it's the equipment. We've had stuff just randomly start working, stop working. And, and stuff. And so again, thank goodness for Graham, uh, he's tried to develop programming uh, and software for this that um, are uh, the kind of thing where if something goes down, you can readily switch to something else. And so it's, it's uh, that's been our sort of main piece of how we're trying to stay connected with people. Um, and fortunately, we've also had a good number of, we have a pastoral care worker in both Basha and Pinoka uh, who have been really good about staying connected with people generally, but particularly in being able to take some of the things that people miss, like, like DVDs or keeping them connected to services or, or small groups, um, help them feel still connected to those things. So many places I wanted to jump in there uh, and, and start to unpack just like with uh, Nancy when she shared. Um, we will continue <laughs> and resist that temptation because um, there'll be a lively discussion to follow. Uh, our And our journey from north to south, our, our next stop is in Calgary. Uh, Corrine is the children and family pastor at Southwood United Church and is doing some uh, amazing things there. So I turn it over to you, Corrine. Thanks, Stephen. I like, uh... Not unlike the two people who spoke before me, um, when I um, when Stephen asked me to speak, I was like, "What what am I doing that's innovative? I don't know. Like, what are, what are we doing?" Um, and so, uh, I guess I will sort of do a similar sort of thing. Talk about some of the things um, that we've done and um, and what we might keep going forward, and and honestly, what we might not. Um, so we have been, as with everybody, mostly virtual since March of um, 2020 up until summer of this year. Summer of this year, we started to do in-person outdoor worship um, over the summer, and we are now in the building, sort of, <laughs> in the building with the adults and actually still outside with the kids' ministry um, for a variety of reasons. So I'll sort of go through a couple of things that we've done a lot of our innovations, I would say, have been modifications of things that we were doing that existed. We And also I found with our innovation, there was a lot of trial and error. Early on, like many people, we tried Zoom Kids Ministry, and that seemed to work in the first you know, couple of months when everybody was sort of scrambling to get their feet under them. There was no school. And very quickly, we found that uh, kids weren't really relating to that, and they were Zooming out. They were done. They were doing Zoom at school. They were doing everything electronically. And... and and they were done. So we had to pivot a bit to see what we could do differently. Um, I don't know how many of you know Sam, our lead minister. He is somebody with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy. And he came to me um, 
before summer of 2020, I think, and said like, what could we do? I've been thinking we need to do something to include kids in, in the streaming because we actually run on a model where we have the kids are separate. We do worship separately. We tell story, we have small group breakouts led by student leaders. Um, and so the kids aren't typically in service unless we do what we call, we have little church, big church, and a whole church. So unless we're doing a whole church service, which is generally high holy days, but we also have other um, special services during the year that are all in. So without doing Zoom kids ministry, um, that became a bit of a challenge. How do we include kids in the online worship? Um, and so what it actually moved us to do was to innovate ways to more rapidly integrate um, kids ministry into the into the service. It was a process we had already started with our music ministry team. I have a worship leader in kids ministry and our worship leader, or our music minister in a big church, so to speak, um, had already, we'd already, the three of us been coordinating on what's shared music, what's music we do in kids ministry that we would like the adults to learn and what's music that the adults are learning and using that the kids should be learning and sort of what stuff that maybe we could all begin to learn together. And so we, we moved up that process a little bit. Uh, we added more music that the kids know more regularly, um, including some more contemporary songs that maybe might not be typically something that you'd see a worship band or music team doing. Um, added some of that in. Um, Emily, my worship leader, although she was furloughed, came in as a volunteer until we started actually brought her, be able to bring her back on staff because she just, she feels it's her church and she was happy to do that. So she came in and actually joined the lead, the main music team um, and sang um, throughout the, the most of the last year and into the summer this year, um, which was great. So that was, I think one of our, and then we added the kids time and the kids time was really cool because the entire staff team was all over being part of that. So the kids time, the story every week, um, we have a retired associate minister, Gary Grottenberg. And for those of you that don't know Gary, Gary has quite the sense of humor and lots of enthusiasm. And both he and Riley, our student minister, like to light stuff on fire. So <laughs> me as the safety person and the theater person uh, made sure that stuff was safe. And, and we, we integrated the kids' story into the worship time. Now, I actually don't know how many kids were watching that, but what I do know is the congregation really actually appreciated that um, time uh, as much or more, I think, than some of the kids. So that was kind of a cool way of bringing kids' worship in. And then from a straight kids ministry perspective, something I've done over the course of my ministry, particularly in the last 10 years, is provided kits at home, um, not unlike the kits that uh, First Third uh, uh, does, but I've been doing them for years for special um, occasions. I've been doing Advent every year, Lent every year, and usually a summer pack every year that goes home that has a variety of activities, devotions, scripture, depending on the season, um, and just ways to connect deeper. So we, the innovation for us was to actually deliver kids ministry that way. So um, Emily and I are worship leader. Um, thankfully, my husband is the tech guy at the church and the video guy. So we shot each month four story videos that went with our, our um, with our curriculum and I packed up the curriculum in a box with activities and our, what we call God times, which are part of our curriculum and a piece of candy because that gets them to open the box. Um, and they always knew there was candy in the box. So they would open the box, which was, it's a great way to get it open at least in the house. Um, and uh, those were delivered once a month. Uh, and uh, we called it Kids Church in a Box. and. One of the cool things, which was, again, what I found when I got thinking about this was, again, integration. I had a group of volunteer drivers who delivered these because we had 30 boxes we need to deliver to families. And that was more than I could handle once a month. And so most of them were seniors. So uh, with Sam's support, he actually wrote a very um, persuasive note to the council members suggesting that perhaps they should form a piece of this team to deliver kids ministry. Um, and so it was this great opportunity where some just dropped the boxes and went, but some didn't. Some stood on the porches and got the last month's box back and visited a little bit. And so going forward, that is certainly something I want to try to 
maintain that relationship cross-generationally. It's going to have to be in a different way. Uh, we've talked about prayer partnerships. Um, perhaps we're not sure yet how that will look going forward, but I think that that was a real positive um, to have adults sort of actively engaged in children's ministry. And then this summer we did everything outside. So kids were um, with us before and after the service and they were with their parents during the service and they had an activity box that was theirs, their name on it all summer. They just picked it up and dropped it off at the end. And because we have an amazing church council, they um, actually enthusiastically approved our proposal to have the kids paint a mural on the fence. So the kids worked on a fence mural all summer long. Um, and again, another way to really visibly um, increase the profile of kids ministry, I think, um, just in general in the congregation. So that was something else uh, we did. Behind the scenes, I think was another thing that was, I don't know if I would call it innovate, I guess maybe innovation. Our staff team was already meeting once a week. Um, now we're meeting online. And I would say the cohesion of our team has increased dramatically for the first portion of the time. It, a lot of it was just like everybody else, ducks with their feet paddling as hard as they could underwater just to keep things going. Um, but it also allowed like the student minister and I were meeting every week and we were talking more and more about integration of the zero to 18 ministries, blowing up uh, silos, working together. And that time that we've spent with the two of us, um, I think it will allow us to innovate going forward because we've really got our sort of ministry model ducks in a row um, for planning. Uh, we switched around some spaces. At first we thought, oh, maybe we should leave everything the way it is because when the kids come back, they'll want some security. And this was, you know, back in the days when we all thought this would be gone in a month. <laughs> so <laughs> once we decided that wasn't really going to be the case, we did some, we did some changing around of spaces, we, you know, repainted some rooms, re rejigged the way some spaces were and what we would be doing with those going forward. Um, as well as, as you're doing in Paroka Bashaw, we doing the same thing. We have a few people that our, our pastoral uh, care minister is delivering DVDs, CDs, printed copies of, of scripts. Um, I'm trying to think, I guess the biggest thing has been flexibility is innovation and dropping stuff that isn't working and trying to trying to move another way to see what might work. Um, and I think with everything, I'm making some phone calls this week because we're doing an outdoor event on Friday. Um, and I've had, I had probably the most difficult call I've had last night, um, just talking to a family and they won't be returning. And it's, it's interesting how we've all had to not only innovate, but balance, um, how that is for each family and how each, each family is feeling about COVID overall, COVID protocols overall, what some might view to be sort of two extreme safety measures, what others think aren't enough. And so I think that's going to be a continual balance act going forward. Um, and the last thing I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with children's ministry and everything to do with our team. I don't know how many of you are aware of Sanctuary Mental Health at a Vancouver. Um, they have a, um, an amazing free program. Um, the whole idea of it is it's an eight session small group. The whole idea of it is to engage and elevate discussion around mental health in churches. It, um, and what we decided was that we would do it as a staff team over the summer, sort of by way of test driving it to see what we thought of the materials before we considered offering it to the congregation. Um, we were completely blown away. The materials are developed with uh, psychologists. They're regularly quoting throughout the Materials Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, it's a really holistic model of talking about uh, mental health. It is definitely not a pray away the problem. Um, um, set of materials and if I could recommend anything our staff team going through that has deepened the intimacy of our team at a level that we and we already thought there was a good cohesion and intimacy in our team but going through this together has equipped us at such a great level it's not developed to make counselors out of people it's it's meant to just open the conversation and to try to make it a safe space to talk about mental health in a church and having gone through all we've gone through as churches, as ministry staff in the last 18 months, 
it was such a blessing to do this as a community of staff team. Um, and then we will be offering it to the congregation as a learning circle going forward. Um, I'm not sure I could recommend it more. It was just an amazing thing. And you know what? We all needed it. We all needed it. Those are some good learns and some good foundational things. I think Vicki uh, famously has me in a text message saying that the pandemic, like this will be over in a couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> so it's like, oops, <laughs> guess not. Um, as we uh, continue uh, our journey, our regional journey uh, to the south, before we open it up for our group discussion time, if you or if you have questions for any of the um, panelists, you can certainly address them now. We're going to go to Lethbridge in the Killip United Church and Reverend Trevor Potter. Trevor. I think I'm <clears throat> a bit like everybody else. I think just been trying to um, survive the pandemic um, and, uh, and, and be the church. Our motto at McKillop has been our, our buildings closed, but the church is not closed. And uh, we've had to innovate or change like everybody. Um, but I wanna share, I'm gonna share my screen with you. It keeps me on task. Um, here we go. And uh, I'm still, I'm not good. We don't use, we use Zoom some, but I'm not great at Zoom there. Can you see this? Um, so what I wanna share with you is what sort of come out for us is, is uh, I can't really claim much of what we're doing here, but um, it's, it's our theme is if our community thrives, we thrive. And I really have to say that comes from Joel Denhan, who's hidden behind his screen there before the pandemic from Jeremiah uh, 29. Um, oops, someone wants to be admitted here. Sorry, did they get in? Uh, comes from uh, Jeremiah 29.7, it's really, you know, if, if the welfare of your community, uh, if you help the welfare of your community, it, it will grow or the peace or prosperity and well-being. So we, we just had, I come from a science background, and so we've had all these sort of experiments we've done over the, the um, uh, pandemic. So I'm just going to share a, a, a quickly with you a few, the, the, from the most recent to the last one. So um, what came up in this fourth wave is how our healthcare workers in Lethbridge and everywhere are are entering into moral distress and moral injury and burnout. And so uh, the, we had an idea to just support them with uh, care packages. And what's so interesting is is um, uh, is the community involvement. What we're learning is is that people want to partner with organizations that have similar values. They may not ever show up on Sunday morning, but they're willing to partner. And so uh, we had over 250 letters, uh, quite a few from the community that came in to support the Lethbridge Regional Hospital. And we had 40 donors that gave money um, and 13 were from the community and 27 were from McKillop. And uh, we had, uh, uh, we, we supported our healthcare workers that way. Um, also what came up is um, we, we've grown more through the uh, partnering with the indigenous ministry, the Chinook Winds region and with Tony Snow um, and others. And so Tony really encouraged us to get more involved in the national day of, of uh, truth and reconciliation. So we uh, did a art project, uh, we did a few things online, but also when the um, 215 um, unmarked graves were discovered, uh, we decided um, that talking about, we had to do more than talking about it. So we, we did an experiment of raising money for the, uh, for the indigenous ministry of the Chinook Winds. And again, we had about the same level of community participation again, people wanting a partner. At McKillop, one of our phrases is, is that money's energy and really, and money's love. And so we can use this energy and love to help our community thrive. And so that was another experiment we did. Um, we got some, we did get some hate and trolling on our social media uh, because what we also discovered is that people who aren't associated with faith communities just lump us all together. No, no matter all the great work the United Church of Canada has done, 
uh, if one church, another denomination is not facing the truth, people think we aren't. So we had we got some trolling on it. Um, the other thing that happened during the pandemic was the whole um, in Southern Alberta was the possibility of opening up coal mining. And so our Justice, Peace and Social Action Group actually became quite involved with Protect Our Water, um, Walking in Solidarity with Coal. And uh, we did a letter writing campaign in our community that generated around 2,500 letters written to various local, provincial and federal governments to stop the coal mining. Um, and uh, so that was an interesting experiment. The other thing we've done is try and experiment with podcasts. It's called Audacious Living. It's, oh, it's supposed to be hope, resiliency, and curiosity. And we're, we're about to release our 11th episode or uh, session. Last week's was Dr. Sean Wild, who's an emergency room doctor at the, at the Lethbridge Regional Hospital. And it's sort of like um, Joe Vipon, but the Lethbridge version. And he's been very vocal about getting data out in Lethbridge. And so um, it was, it, we're, we're trying to tie, help our community thrive, support our healthcare workers. We had people like Diane Strickland on talking about trauma. We're gonna have Dr. Rita Natasha Brock um, talking about moral injury and moral distress, which is part of the pandemic. I think us clergy are experiencing it. And then uh, uh, one of the final things we did really early on was we did a mass campaign called Love Your Neighbor as Yourself in July. When was that? 2020. It seems so long ago. We actually, our quilting group has actually made over 2,500 cloth masks that have been given away free into the community, especially at the beginning. And we did do a sort of an edgy social media campaign where a freaking, freak, you know, a freaking mask for love's sake. And so we are trying to push uh, the common good and uh, care, duty of care back in July 2020 around uh, encouraging masks and, and, and handing masks out as a way to demonstrate love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, we got some interesting <laughs> trolls and feedback. Actually, we've got a lot of trolls. That's one thing we've learned from that. We do push it on our social media, uh, on our podcast. We've had people call us racist, uh, anti-indigenous, homophobic, uh, when we're not doing all these things. And what they do is then it shuts down our podcast for a, a few days while we, we have to clarify with Podbean that we're none of these things. So that's been an interesting thing. And then finally, just really briefly, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we decided to go from what they call from the stage to the studio for our our um, worship. And so our experiment has not been to stay in the sanctuary. We actually have modified it throughout to where now we have a green screen and we do all sorts of stuff to try and make it that more one on one person um, experience bringing and we bring in multiple different sources during it. And uh, the big debate when we do come back to in person, which we haven't yet is there is a real split now in sort of the core members is that like three of our executives say, well, I just like to stay home on Sunday morning. It's more personable than being in the sanctuary. So we're looking at um, whether we keep a very short, quite different st uh, studio thing that's different than Sunday morning, or if we create sort of the Johnny Carson Sunday morning experience, like uh, uh, Robin was talking about is that uh, so people feel like they can engage in the service. So that's real brief. That's what we've been up to. Wow. <laughs> Such good sharings from all of you. Thank you to all of our panelists. And, and now I'm, I'm, I think I'm breaking one of the co commandments by coveting, coveting, coveting all those Macs that you have in the studio, uh, Trevor. <laughs> Um, so let's open it up for questions to our panelists or panelists, if you have questions of each other, um, feel free to, to ask and we'll have a group discussion. Let's try as much as possible to either use the reaction raised hand or, or even a simple raised hand and I'll try and uh, kind of moderate the discussion a little bit. Now, now you're all checking your notes thinking like, who shall I ask the question of first? The 
adult learning theory says that it takes um, adults 30 to 45 seconds to process information and to uh, verbalize that. So I'm quite comfortable with silence. Yes, Junior. Yes, good morning. Um, I really enjoyed the, um, uh, the presentation on focusing on kids um, because it's one of the things I've been trying to do being someone new here at, uh, at Bow Island, um, uh, trying to um, include the children a little bit more. And one thing um, uh, I've done is to simply move the children's time that we normally have, uh, which has always been before we read scriptures and the kids would have their time and then go off to Sunday school and then we'd have the scriptures and then the sermon. Um, so uh, one thing we've done is moved uh, that children's time right after the, the second readings and before the, um, uh, before the sermon so that uh, the children will hear the scripture, the Sunday school teachers will hear the scripture. One of the complaints was we, we never get to be involved in, in, in Sunday uh, worship. And um, they also choose the hymn that goes along with um, uh, their children's time. And um, uh, so the, the folks from Calgary, I really appreciated that presentation on uh, focusing on children and seeing how to how to involve them a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, within the service. Um, one thing I, I, I heard was um, having a kid's church in a box. And that piqued my interest also whether or not we could have an adult church in a box, <laughs> because we also have a lot of people in um, retirement homes. Uh, who have not come to, to church. And I, I wonder how that would look, uh, having an adult church in a box. Um, if I can respond to that, we actually sparked by the kids church in a box. We have our church council chair is an amazing writer. And she has produced for many years, not just during COVID, uh, daily devotionals. Uh, she's a student of scripture. She's just a phenomenal woman. And so she's written chunks of time where we've had a devotional every day for three months that she's written or Advent or Lent. And this year she actually did Lent in a box for the grownups. She, she prepared a package that was like the kids church in the box and it had devotions and craft activities and, and craft activities to engage scripture um, and all sorts of other items for Holy Week and such in it. So I think that it absolutely could and was quite successful um, be modified for adults. And I actually love the idea of taking it to people who are in seniors residences who can't come out because I think that's a I think that's a really neat, neat idea. We've had our people have sort of subscribed, so to speak, and 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 signed up for it, but I think it could easily be done in a way that it's a gift just taken out to people who who can. I, yeah, so it was very successful when we did it um, in, for Lent, and I think they did it again in the summer, and I'm not sure what the success rate of that one was, but I think it's, I think that's a great idea to take it to, to kids, or to, to adults as well. Yeah, great thought. What, what can't we do? Uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, isn't it? And we've all uh, been stretched in ways that we weren't sure that we would be stretched in. Uh, anyone else have a question or comment or uh, thought? Dave Holmes from Lacombe. Hey, I think this is probably directed uh, at uh, um, maybe uh, uh, Trevor and Robin. Um, I, I, I like that your phrase, uh, Trevor, uh, Johnny Carson worship. Uh, and uh, I just wondered if you, you guys could say a little bit more. I, I know I've, I've also uh, uh, struggled a bit between the difference between what is produced for um, video at home and, and what happens in person. And so I just wondered if you could say a little bit more, if you can, about 
Johnny Carson worship. Um, sure, sure. Um, really, Johnny Carson? I'm more of a Seth Meyers guy, I have to say. Um, but um, that being said, uh, yeah, it's from from our perspective. It's more just a question of awareness. That um, when I use that as an example, um, I'm not suggesting that we st inches from the face of the person who's leading and you know and add a laugh track when necessary, which is often. Um, but but it does mean being aware of of things like uh, just by way of an example. Uh, it's great to have people from your congregation read. Uh, as lay, uh, have people come and read scripture. Um, but if that is an elderly person who doesn't get up until it actually reaches that point in the service and you have to wait for them to walk all the way to the front, find their page, pick up their cane when they've dropped it and then start to speak, you've lost somebody who's watching, right? In the room, that's okay because you know them, you, you love them, you know who that person is and you can see it all happening, you're all part of it. But when you're watching online, things like that are hard to get past sometimes. And so for, for us, it just became trying to be more aware of uh, the experience of being in the room and the experience of, of watching on a screen being different things. And that more often than not actually improved how things were happening in the room. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be re really careful how to say that though, because I don't want it to sound like it's a show, um, but to be fair, it is theater and it is drama. Uh, at least we hope it is uh, in order to, to be connecting with people. And so we have become very aware of um, how those are, very, those are different pictures, uh, whether you're experiencing it in person or uh, watching a screen, even if you're watching it, whether you're watching it live or it's a video, uh, like a, a recording, um, those are very different experiences. Uh, and, uh, and also I liked, uh, somebody said something about using, and maybe it was Trevor, uh, said something about using other, uh, other media and other material video uh, whenever we can. We've also discovered that we have people, we have people in each of our congregations um, who are very, uh, well, we have theater groups in each of our congregations for starters, but we also have the potential for a band in each congregation, unless we want them to show up on Sunday morning at 10.30. So we can get them together at another time, create a video and use that as part of, uh, use that as part of the service. Previously, we didn't really think about that because we were so focused about people being in the room. And uh, again, as, as Trevor said, it's, it's the, the building might be closed, but that doesn't stop us from being the church, right? Um, and so this has uh, opened up new avenues for that, for us of being able to uh, communicate with people that way. Um, but uh, that's, that's not to say that every now and then we don't use somebody sitting in a big chair telling a story either, so. It's the, that's the friendly giant effect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor? Yeah, I, I think um, we were doing live streaming for 10 years or, yeah, before the pandemic hit. And usually it was one camera in the sanctuary. And it was sort of like, it was great for core members because they know what's like Robin's saying, they know what's happening in church. They don't, they don't mind, um, uh, you know, the pauses and stuff. But with the pandemic, it's like we're competing with, um, we're competing with culture in terms of, you know, video and stuff. And, and so it's like, how do you engage people is the real question more than just watching like we've been trying to struggle with how do we engage them and so we've been we've been uh, experimenting with um, taking live Facebook or YouTube comments and in live in live live stream integrating them into the worship service so like we do a shout out to somebody oh Deb Deb uh, said on YouTube this about uh, you know something in the sermon and we bring it in or a prayer but we're also, you know, it's like when you have a live audience and you have somebody watching, how do you, I, I think younger people and people who will never come in the building and want to feel engaged, but not just witnessing it over, over it. So um, we're looking at different camera angles. We're looking um, um, at, 
at that at sometimes whoever's speaking it feels like the person's actually speaking to you at home instead of just overhearing what's happening so that you so we're experimenting with that um, um, and we we actually use a lot of other videos from other sources in a good in hopefully the best copyright way so it's not just one voice so we use videos for like from work of the people sometimes from the states uh, uh, a, a, a group from um, South Africa called Green Renaissance. They have a lot of amazing stories. Uh, and so we're trying to do things like that. I don't know if that helps, but I agree with what Robbins. It's, it's a whole new world. It is a whole new world. Um, just to manage our time, I realize that we're at the top of the hour. So if, if you do need to go, that's fine. Um, blessings on your day but we will uh continue the discussion for a couple minutes left yet if you'd like to stick stick around are there any other questions about uh or to our panelists or discussion items that have been prompted from our discussion yes junior yeah, sorry, I have another, it's not a comment, but a question. Um, the, uh, uh, the folks here have not, in fact, experienced, um, you know, YouTube or Facebook or Zoom at all uh, during this period. Um, however, all the things we've discussed um, today are so exciting. And I'm wondering whether or not um, it would be useful to introduce some of these uh, concepts to, uh, to, to people um, so that we can begin to use some of these technological things um, in, in our ministry. Um, would you suggest <laughs> that that could be something to be started, so to speak? I think there's some uh, innovative ways we're trying to um, share uh, what's going on, and this this is certainly one of them. So that we are aware of uh, innovative things that are happening throughout the region, and I think we had a great representation today from around the region, and we'll try to do more of these if if that will help. And I know that um, Shelley has some some big plans with uh, tech mentors and things like that coming down the pipe at some point. Uh, so that will be another thing we use to augment and enhance our ability and our discussion and our overall knowledge base for things like this. Are you, Junior, asking whether or not you think, like, whether or not it's a good idea now to start introducing some of those things, like, this far into the pandemic? Is that your yes, question? Yes, that's my question. Pandemic yeah. or not, um, should should we begin to consider some of these uh, great ideas that were discussed uh, today? Um, um. Yeah, what I what I would say to that is that, you know, one of the things that is going to come out of this pandemic is a greater awareness of um, of how we should behave when one has a virus, whether it's COVID or whether it's a cold or whether it's any other kind of flu. You know, I think our culture has been, you know, pushed through. If you're sick, just show up, you know, bring a box of Kleenex and do your job. And I think that that's kind of going to shift a bit um, and people are going to be more aware of not wanting to catch things and and really encouraging people to stay home. So having um, some kind of online presence going forward makes that easier so people don't have to um, miss if they want to stay home um, because they're unwell or if they've got a sick child to care for or whatever. So I don't think it's too late. Um, I think it. I think it's good to start experimenting and, and trying some of these things and uh, different kinds of multimedia. And uh, we do have a kind of repository of training videos on these things uh, that are available through Leadershift, um, which you can access through the Leadershift website. And if you're having trouble finding it, you can contact staff and we'll help you locate some of those resources. And then some earlier um, tech workshops that were done um, 
in Chinook Winds region as well. So we have those videos. If you want to access them, we can share those with you as well as a kind of starting place. Um, and then, you know, you can you can go from there. Yes, Nancy. Um, I was just going to add to that. Another thing the pandemic has done is encouraged us to take things out of the building. Um, so if you don't necessarily have the technology to do um, the live streaming and the zooming and all that, um, and you're not able to do that, um, that I think that's been another thing that's really opened up for us is what can we what can we take outside or what can we how can we connect with people in different ways uh, outside the building which has really opened things up. Robin, you're the first person I heard about doing a DVD, and I think that's a great idea because I could envision, you know, those little portable DVD players that I don't know I had for my kids when they were little, like, you know, they're $100, you could purchase a few of those and send that with a, with a DVD to somebody who doesn't have access otherwise. I think that would that's a brilliant idea. I'm, it, and in fact, that brilliant idea has already been already been done. I, I don't think Trevor will mind he's sharing this. He sent me this message privately. Um, that is what they do in Lethbridge. They have a little uh, single unit thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's lots of places that have been doing, you know, CDs or DVDs for for a while. And, and for, for uh, shut in or seniors, you know, in facilities and things like that. And the idea of having that little unit that you can actually either take with you or leave with them, that's, that's, uh, we're, we'll be doing that. That's an awesome idea. I got a couple old ones I could ship you. <laughs> if, if they work, if they work, we honestly, we'd take them for sure. That's such a great idea. I, I honestly, I didn't even think of DVDs and boy, it's approachable technology. Um, for so many folks that that don't have access to to Zoom or or to some of the more uh, we'll call it sophisticated online applications, can, can I just add to that? By the way, Stephen, uh, yeah. that um, particularly uh, we have a, a seniors facility here in Bashaw that's a multi-level facility, um, and so that it's people. There's people who are quite active and can leave the building, and people who are uh, essentially, uh, you know, they're um, requires such a level of care that they're not even really leaving their room very often. And um, so we we have been doing services there forever. And when the pandemic started, of course, we couldn't go. And so we started recording them and sending them uh, just here. We started sending them on a stick. And then uh, the couple of the places, there's, I think, four facilities in Pinoca asked about that. And they didn't have the technology for us to just send them on a stick and so we started posting stuff to youtube um so that they could access it through youtube and uh, and i think that's uh, another thing worth mentioning is that um once you start down the once you start down the road of technology there's a whole variety of there's like dvds there's youtube there's facebook there's there's a whole wave of, of ways that people do stuff and uh, ironically uh, the facilities in Pinoca and the one in Basha both have very similar smart TVs in one place only knows how to do it if you give them a stick that they can stick in the smart TV and the other person only knows how to do it if you have it on YouTube because they can find YouTube on the so it's often not the technology it's the person too so but it's it is a real asset in places like that because um, they can see you right you're not just talking to them on the phone um uh, or giving them a delivering a piece of paper to the door knowing that you can't go in you're actually seeing them or they're seeing you rather um and so there's it's a good way to be connected there yeah. and i think um speaks i can't remember um which one of you um of our panelists mentioned the importance of flexibility and uh keeping keeping things malleable but it's it's important not only that but to realize that we're going to be kind of speaking to many different contexts, um, e even in our own in our own communities that we didn't realize. Like the the difference between the two seniors' homes is a is a little contextual subtlety that we have to kind of work with to make it available to as many as possible. Are there any other questions?
Okay. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much to each of our panelists for sharing the innovation uh, that they are doing in, in their communities of faith. And it only goes to show that there is a lot going on in our region and a lot to be proud of. And, and um, a lot of uh, folks that we can tap on the shoulder if we need uh, to have a question answered. And thank you all for your participation today, uh, for your willingness to continue to journey through this pandemic time that we're in. And we all look forward to it ending, but we look forward to being bolstered by the innovation that has come out of it as well. Trina, do you have anything you'd like to um, close with or any last thoughts? No, I just, I just think it's great to have us come together. I think we've spent so much time, you know, kind of focused on on the at the negative aspects of the pandemic, and and I think it's great to raise up some of the the great things that are happening and the innovations and the ways in which we are all staying connected. So I just, I just really appreciate this opportunity, and and I look forward to more. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Blessings on your day and your ministries. We'll see you soon. Thank you.